Good morning. Good morning. Very warm welcome to our service this morning, a service of Holy Communion. And we begin in song. And if I knew what the first hymn was, I would let you know. Number 481. <laughs> Do sit down. It's lovely to see those in church. It's great that uh, people can join us um, from wherever they are in the world as well um, by the magic of the internet. Um, but great that we can be together. We are all one in Christ Jesus. At notices for this week. Uh, we're almost about to get back to normal, whatever that might be. Um, normal means PCC meetings. Oh, dear. Uh, there's one on uh, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. For those on PCC, please do try to join us if you can. Um, next Sunday, we are here at 11 o'clock. And at 6.30 p.m., we have a service this evening at 6.30 p.m. Next uh, Sunday morning is uh, an all-age service. Uh, just a couple of advanced notices. One is on the 24th of September. Um, we will be having a, a, a fun day. Um, you may remember some of us, uh, the fun day that we had last year, uh, which was uh, hugely successful, and hopefully this year we'll surpass it. We've got even more exciting things uh, happening uh, on, on the fun day. More details, 
see Judith, who's not here this morning, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll let you know a bit more as uh, as uh, we get closer to the event. Um, but uh, please do uh, invite uh, people along who who you know in the community. Um, now the other thing is that beginning a week on Tuesday, that's the uh, I think that's the 13th of September, we're going to begin a course called the Bible Course. Now this is an introduction to the Bible. Um, it's uh, produced by the Bible Society. It's, it tells the story of the Bible. This is a little bit small for you to see, but it's kind of like a timeline uh, and uh, it looks a little bit peculiar but it will reveal sim quite simply, I hope, the story of the Bible. Um, and there are uh, things to uh, look at, things to discuss, things to discover. Um, if you've ever wondered why um, the books of the Bible are in the order that they're in, or what this particular book is all about, or all that kind of thing, then the Bible course is for you. If you'd like to get to know the Bible a bit better, the Bible course is for you, for everybody, really. If you think you know um, a bit about the Bible, um, then you might even be able to, to learn a bit more from this course. There's a series of videos. There's also um, kind of a group discussion uh, uh, and that kind of thing. We're going to hold it um, at Jonathan and Sarah's house, uh, which is the White House on Leckenby Street. Um, it's not where the president lives, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, you'll, you'll see it uh, on Leckenby Street. It's kind of uh, just before the road uh, where uh, you've got uh, Derek's uh, shop on the corner there. Um, uh, and that will be beginning at 7.30 on Tuesday, the 13th of September. Now, if you would like to come, and you can let me know in advance, please do, then I can order um, some, of the, uh, some more of these books. I've only got one, but these, are, these, these give us the, the kind of the course in brief, if you will. Uh, and would be very helpful if those who come along um, could, uh, could, could have one. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to come, um, please do let me know, and then I can, uh, I can get the books uh, ordered. I think, yes, Jonathan? Oh, good question, yeah. It, it's an eight-week course. There might be one or two weeks that we'll have to miss out, so... Um, but uh, it, it, eight weeks, um, we, as a, yeah, we'll do the, the whole eight weeks. So over September and October, uh, as I say, there might in between, there might be one or two weeks where, where either we have to pause for a week or, or that kind of thing. But uh, um, for, for, for eight weeks from the 13th of September, um, 7.30 p.m., if you can join, that would be great. I think that's all the notices we have. So, let's, uh, our service can be found in the uh, red uh, booklets and we're on page one. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And at the top of page two, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ said. The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say the uh, prayer at the top of page three. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we stand to sing the glory. Please do sit or kneel for prayer. Let me say the collect for today, which is the 11th Sunday after Trinity. <clears throat> oh God, who, de who declares in your almighty power Sorry. Um, let me find... Almighty God, who, who in your almighty power use it most chiefly 
in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant unto us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And uh, could we have, please, our first reading? Thanks, David. The first reading this morning is Psalm 27, a Psalm of David, and it can be followed on page 557 of the Pew Bible. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in a day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at, the tab at his tabernacle. I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart and wait for the Lord. This is a word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing our second hymn, number 554, Peace is Flowing Like a River.
remain standing for the gospel reading. And the gospel reading is taken from the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 18, beginning to read at the first verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said to them, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't care, I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they will get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we stand, let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that we can pray to you. And now we pray that you would open our eyes to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please do sit down. <clears throat> We've uh, been looking at prayer uh, over the last uh, three weeks. This is the fourth week. And um, <laughs> I've discovered that uh, uh, four weeks is too short a period for to cover um, all aspects of prayer uh, and uh, I uh, will have a, a, a little look at uh, um, some things about prayer this morning which I hope I haven't covered already or maybe a reminder to some um, but uh, there's plenty uh, that uh, we still need to go at. Now then, in the Church of England, we do like order, and we do like, <laughs> we do like actually these days to remember those who have gone before us in the faith. I don't know if you know whose commemoration or, uh, or day it was yesterday. I'm guessing most likely that you don't. <clears throat> and I'm looking around and seeing blank faces. And uh, it's actually uh, a lesser festival, um, which uh, has kind of come in with, with common worship uh, and has become popular, and it's more popular in some churches than others um, these days. We don't celebrate many uh, in, in our church, but it can be good to remember some of the saints, some of those ordinary people through whom God has done extraordinary things. And yesterday was the uh, lesser festival of Monica. And I'm still seeing blank faces <laughs> because I'm guessing that many of us, uh, including me, don't really know who Monica is. <laughs> Monica 
I did it, I had to look this up. Monica is uh, a, a woman who lived in the fourth century. So it's perhaps not surprising that we don't know who she is. She lived in North Africa. Uh, and she was married to a man who uh, could be trouble at times. Um, and she had, I think, three sons. She may have had some daughters as well. Um, but the first son gave her quite a bit of trouble. She was a devout Christian. <coughs> she was uh, in church every week. She brought her children up as well to know the faith. She sent them to confirmation classes and so on, as we I'm interpreting it for today. <coughs> but the eldest one, he, well, he didn't get along with it, really. And he was after all sorts of other thrills and things to stimulate him. And uh, it came the time that he left home uh, and uh, went, uh, actually went to Italy. And Monica could do nothing to keep him in the church. All she could do is pray for him. And she prayed for him, and she prayed for him, and she prayed for him. And actually, she followed him. <laughs> he'd gone to Rome, and she eventually turned up in Rome, but by the time she got there, he'd moved somewhere else, and so it went on, until she finally caught up with him in Milan. And this was years and years later. And in Milan, he met with the leader of the church there, whose name was Ambrose. And Ambrose taught Monica's son um, about faith in Jesus Christ. And suddenly it all clicked to this son. And as a result of Monica's faithful prayer, day after day, year after year, for 15 years or more, her son, Augustine, became a Christian. And he actually became not simply a Christian, but one of the foremost leaders of the church in that century. And he is so influential that even today, um, in theological colleges, in Bible colleges, and even in church sometimes, we hear about St. Augustine. He taught us great things about faith in Christ Jesus. The power of prayer. The persistence of prayer. We saw in Monica. And she bears out what Luke tells us about why Jesus told the, the, the parable that we heard to his disciples, that they should pray and not give up. And let me encourage you, me, to pray and not give up. Because Sometimes we can be tempted to give up and think, oh, why am I wasting my breath <laughs> or my time? But prayer does work. I want to say a little bit about prayer for others. Prayer for others, we give a fancy name in the Church of England, of course, like we like to do, we call them intersections. Because we intercede for other people. We bring them before God. And we ask for things for other people. And, well, how do we do that? We do that together in church, as we do our intercessions. We sometimes do in prayer meetings or in groups. We do on our own as well. We can do. 
and I have a list of, um, of uh, people who I pray for, I pray for regularly. And if you're on the electoral roll, you're on that list. So I pray for you regularly. There's actually others who aren't on the electoral roll who I pray for as well. Um, so there's still hope. <laughs> but um, what, what do we pray for others? Well, um, we pray really what's on our hearts. But let me, let, me, let me encourage you to be specific about prayer and to pray the things that will be good for the people for whom we pray. And in particular, will be good for them in relation to God. <clears throat> um, quite a number of years ago, uh, I uh, had... Uh, there was a, um, a relative of, of, of my wife who became ill. He had bowel cancer, and his prognosis was, was poor. And uh, so the two of us, together with others, um, we, we got together and we prayed for him. His name was Dave, and he, he wasn't a Christian. He wasn't interested in God or... Uh, knowing him, or anything like that. And uh, we began to pray that, that God would heal him. But we also, as we, as we met to pray, which we did um, maybe once a week for, uh, for, for quite some time, we also began to discuss with each other what do we really need to pray specifically for Dave. Because... If you're specific in prayer, then you can see the answers to the prayer. If you just say, God bless whoever, then, well, yeah, it might have happened or it might not. Um, but uh, it's good to be specific. And we asked God together what we should pray for Dave. And over the course of a week or two, several of us got the same answer. How do you get an answer? Well, I, I never hear a voice inside my head, but I have a kind of a conviction, a sense of, of, of what's the right thing. And what we, what we came together and several of us said together was, uh, in, in the same meeting was, um, what we should pray for Dave is that he comes to know Jesus because then for eternity he is safe he's alive and I have to confess that as we pray for that I didn't have a great deal of faith but a week or two later a few weeks later as we continued to pray, he had to go into hospital for a few days. And in the next bed to him, some would say by coincidence, there was a man who was a, 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 a real Christian who was on fire with his faith. And he talked today about God and about Jesus. And Dave became a Christian. And um, a few months later, he died. But we saw the specific answer to the deepest prayer and the most important prayer, perhaps, for Dave at that time. And it's a real encouragement to know that God hears our prayers and that God answers them. We, uh, we began our series with prayer is like, prayer is like a telephone. Thank you very much. <laughs> prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've uh, 
Kat actually gave me um, uh, the music to it, but I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> Phew, sigh of relief all around. Um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, telephone conversation is exactly that. It's a conversation. And God's on the other end of the line. And um, therefore, we should expect God to speak to us. But how does God speak to us? And how do we give him the chance to speak to us? One of my daughters, I won't say which, <laughs> loves to tell me lots and lots of stuff. And sometimes I'm, 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 trying, to get to, <laughs> I'm trying to get the word in because she's so excited about what's happening or, 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 or that kind of thing. And it's lovely. Um, but it's great when she says, so what about you, Dad? Or how's your day been? Or that kind of thing. And do we give the chance for God to speak to us? I think that's what David was doing in, in, in the song that we heard uh, this morning which is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 27. And David makes the prayer that uh, he would dwell in God's house, that he would live in God's house. Now, God's house hadn't been built when David was alive. The temple was built by his son, Solomon. What he means is that he would be as if he's in God's house. Is in God's presence. And we, by God's Spirit, are with Him all the time. His Spirit lives within us through what Jesus has done for us. And um, David says in the song, he says, um, <clears throat> My heart says, says of you, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Again, God is spirit, so he doesn't have a face. But what, what David means is that he would really know God. And what God is saying to him and what God uh, means to him in his life. And he ends the psalm by saying, wait for the Lord. Stillness is important to us in a world that is so frantic in many ways. Quiet, time alone with God. Perhaps meditating on a verse or two from the Bible. Perhaps just focusing on God in our mind. Perhaps looking out at the wonder of his creation. In many ways, as we're still before God, we can listen. We can seek his face. We can dwell, we can live with him and wait for him. And I hope that we will be able to do that in prayer. But the final thing about prayer that I, I, I can only touch on really today is that sometimes prayer can be frustrating. It can be frustrating because we don't get answers to prayer. Or perhaps it's better to say, we don't get the answers that we want. <laughs> and that can be hard. And that can put us off. But my encouragement would be, keep on keeping on. Keep praying. Because God does answer prayer. And he does it in the ways that are best. Overall. 
And sometimes we can't see what's best. One of my biggest prayers, God didn't answer in the way that I wanted to. My wife died of cancer. I prayed that she wouldn't. And I still don't know why God said no. And I, I, I shouldn't say this, but I, I sometimes think that he made the wrong decision. I, I often think that he made the wrong, because, yeah. Um, um, but God says, God said through Isaiah, my ways are not your ways. Neither are your thoughts my thoughts. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so though I don't know why, and I may never know why, some of my prayers are not answered in the way that I want them to be. I'm challenged. I'm called to trust that God's ways are higher than mine. But actually, he does know best, <laughs> and not me, <laughs> which might seem obvious to you. <laughs> no doubt it seems obvious to you, but, but it is true. And of that we have to hold on and to keep on. So let me encourage you to keep on praying. Keep it simple. Keep it real. Keep it up. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, we, we've said that uh, uh, quite a few times. Um, and, and keep on believing in the power of prayer. Because God does work in this world today and all that he does is for the best for all of us amen so could we uh, please stand to declare our faith uh, it's on uh, the uh, on page seven in the booklets uh, the words of the creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. <coughs> for our sake he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Amen. And so we turn now to our time of intercessions. Please do sit or kneel for prayer. in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, 
Let us pray to you, the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith and to answer us as is best for us. Strengthen Philip and Jill, our bishops, and be with those who are responsible for choosing our new Bishop of Blackburn. And please, Lord, may the one who is chosen be the, be the person of your calling. And Lord, strengthen all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would lead us into a deeper love, one for one another. May we lift each other up rather than put each other down. Teach us, Lord, to pray in faith for others and teach us how to pray for the building of your kingdom in this world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace that we may honour one another and seek the common good. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, um, for those who are electing um, the new leader of the Conservative Party who will be our Prime Minister, the person of your call and choosing may be elected to that role. We pray that you would give their government um, the insight and wisdom that they need to help to seek solutions to the cost of living crisis and the rising fuel prices. We pray, Lord, that those who are poor, that those who need help, would be given the help that they need. We pray, Lord, for all nations and for the organization of the United Nations. We pray for unity in standing up against injustice, and especially in the war in Ukraine. We do pray uh, that uh, the Ukrainian people may be given the help that they need to stand up against the aggressor. We also lift before you the people of Pakistan who are, are suffering terribly as a result of uh, floods over this monsoon season. We pray for the families of those more than a thousand people who have died in the floods, for comfort and strength for them. We pray for those who have lost their homes and livelihoods, that they may be given the help and protection that they need. We pray for the Pakistan government and for aid agencies and others that uh, they may be enabled to get help to the places where it is most needed. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. 
We pray, O oh Lord, in our community that you would give us eyes to see those who are in need and give us the wisdom to be able to help where we can. Lord, we lift before you those who are preparing to go back to school, teachers, support staff, and children. Lord, that uh, they may have been refreshed by their holidays and that uh, as they go back, um, they may, um, they may um, work together to um, encourage and welcome those who are new uh, in new classes, uh, those who are moving up to new schools um, and uh, those who are starting new jobs. And may schools run smoothly to give the best education that they can to the children in their care. We pray for those who have not had rest over the summer. We, we lift before you especially our farming community. We pray, Lord, that you would guard uh, the crops of those who have planted. We thank you that there has been um, some rain here. We pray for areas of the country where there is still, there are drought conditions. We pray, Lord, for help for those who need. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. In a moment of silence, let us bring before God the people we know, the people who are on our hearts at this time, and let us pray for them um, what we would like God to do for them. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them healing, comfort, peace and the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we sing together our offertory hymn, number 806.
Let us pray. O Lord, our God, we thank and praise you for all your love and your goodness to us. We thank you for everything that you give to us. And we pray that you would use these gifts and the money given in other ways to bring glory to your name and more people to know the love of the Lord Jesus. In his name. Amen. Amen. Um, we're on page 22 of uh, the booklets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are in holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for, for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
turn back please to page 12 as we sit to O'Neill for prayer. <coughs> Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At the top of page 15 we pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. You are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Let me just say a prayer for those who are um, uh, at home and cannot receive uh, physically with us. Lord God, Lord our God, we thank you that we are one together and we lift before you those who um, cannot uh, physically take uh, bread and wine this morning and pray that spiritually they may feed on you and that as one we may proclaim your death, your resurrection, your life for us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Just a note on um, how we receive um, the choir will come to the rail to receive um, and then Alison and I will bring um, the, uh, the bread and wine to the top step there and I would ask you to come um, out uh, beginning on um, the right hand side to you. Uh, if you come up this aisle and uh, receive here and then make your way back down the opposite aisle uh, so that you go around in a circle and um, then the, the middle again if you will do the same and finally on, on the left hand side if you would come round to the right and back to the left. Uh, let's hope it all works okay. Thank you. Always forget to say, don't forget your cup. <laughs> you are, if you'd like to receive wine.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on page 16, let us say the uh, prayer at the bottom of the page. Father of us, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us up. Dying and living, you declared your and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the path set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, which is number... Four, four, five. Thank you. <laughs>
thank you very much for being with us, however you've joined us. If you're able to, uh, please do um, come over to the school hall for tea and coffee uh, after the service. Um, but uh, as we close, a final prayer this week. May we gaze, Lord, on your kingly brightness. May our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on us, Lord. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.